Welcome to Developer Ramp Up, a channel dedicated to anybody who wishes to become a software developer or a better software developer. In this video we'll talk about Insertion Sort. Insertion Sort is a simple sorting algorithm that builds the final sorted array or list of items one at a time. It is of course much less efficient on larger lists than more advanced algorithms such as quick sort, heap sort or mesh sort. However, insertion sort provides several advantages. One of them is that it is very simple to implement. And another one is that uh, it's more efficient in practice than most other simple sorting algorithms like selection sort or bubble sort. Among these simple sorting algorithms, insertion sort is maybe the one with the best performance. So what we'll do in this video, we'll look a little bit how this algorithm is supposed to work and then we'll try to implement it in a C-sharp console application. So let's get started and explain how this algorithm is supposed to work. Let's suppose we have this simple list of unsorted numbers and we want to sort this list according to the insertion sort algorithm. So how we should proceed? First of all, as this is also a simple sorting algorithm, like bubble sort for instance, we will also have two loops. Only that the loops, or at least the inner loop, is working a little bit different here. So we will start with our first iteration. Now, the way we then start comparing the elements is a little bit different. Let's see that let's say that this first iteration has an index of 1 because it is the first iteration. So when we start to do the comparison, we will not start with the first element, which would be 10, but we will start with the iteration plus 1 element. So 1 plus 1 would be 2. So we start with the second element, and this would be 15. However, the way insertion works here is that we do not compare 15 to the numbers that come after it but we go backwards and compare 15 to all the numbers that precedes that specific number so in this case we'll compare 15 to 10 and is 15 greater than 10 yes it is and in this case we do not have to swap these elements now since 10 is the last element in uh, this backwards loop because it was the first element of this list we cannot compare 15 with any other number. So here we put 15 back where it was before and we have finished our first iteration. Now for the second iteration we start with the same list. However, where do we start the comparison now? So this is the second iteration which would have an index of 2 and then we add 1 we would start at the third element in this list which is 7 and we compare 7 to 15. Is 7 greater than 15? No, it is not greater than 15. So this means that we would have to swap these two elements. However, important to note here is that we do not do here the swap directly. But after we have decided that we would have to swap here, we also compare 7 to the next element in the backward loop. And this would be 10. So is 7 greater than 10? No, it is not, so we would have to swap them also. And 10 was the last number, at the end we will put 7 at the beginning of the list. And this is our second iteration. Now for the third iteration we start with the fourth element which is 20. And we start to compare, is 20 greater than 15? Yes it is, so 20 should not change position with 15. Then is 20 greater than 10? Of course it's greater than 10. So once again we do not have to swap positions here. And then we compare 20 to 7. Is 20 greater than 7? Of course it is. So once again we do not have to swap this element. So after this third iteration what we got is that 20 still remains in the same place. And as this is the fourth iteration we start our backwards loop with the fifth element, which is 5, and we compare it to 20. Is 5 greater than 20? Of course it is not. So these two would have to swap positions. Now, is 5 greater than 15? No, it is not. Once again, we have to swap positions. But 5 is still not inserted back in the list. 
So then we check 5 and 10. Is 5 greater than 10? No, of course it's not. So once again, we also have to swap this element, but still we have to compare 5 to the last element in this backward list, which is 7. And 5 is also not greater than 7, so we would have to swap them. And what we see here that when we finish the fourth iteration, we have the list that is now sorted. So we have 5, 7, 10, 15, 20. Now we also required here four iterations, let's say four outer loop iterations, and in which uh, iteration we ran another loop comparing backwards the current element in the loop with all previous elements in the list and inserting the current element at the correct place. So that's why this insertion sort algorithm is uh, more efficient than a simple bubble sort because the number of swaps that it would have to do is of course uh, lower than the number of swaps that we would have to do in a bubble sort algorithm. And uh, of course there are ways to improve both bubble sort and insertion sort algorithms. But what I would like to do is just to compare, I would say, the standard form of this insertion sort and bubble sort. So not any uh, optimized uh, algorithms, but the bare insertion sort algorithm and bubble sort algorithm. So this is how insertion sort is done. Let's now go to Visual Studio and see exactly how we could implement this in a C-sharp program. And we should start by setting things up first because we want to have a real console application, not just a simple algorithm here. We want to also check if the algorithm works. So uh, yeah, let's set things up. What we would need is an array of numbers, but it would be optimal if we could do this in a way that each time we run the programs, the array of numbers is different. So we would need an array of random numbers. And therefore we need a new random variable, rnd equals new random. And of course we mistyped here random. This should be correct now. And of course we have to use the parentheses here. So we generate the new object and now we would need an array of numbers. So it's int array numbers would be new int array and we want to have 10 elements in the array and of course now we want to iterate through each index of the array and add a random number so for int i equals zero i is less than numbers dot length and i plus plus so that we increase the counter each time and for each time we are here the number at the position i should be rnd.next and it should be a number between 1 and 99 so this is how we declare this here now the next thing let's also print something to the console that we know and we have something to compare console right line of console right line of course and here it would be unsorted array of numbers is okay and of course in order to display all the elements in this array we would also need a for each loop var number in numbers and we would should console dot write and the number plus some spacing so that it would be more readable for us and that should do it let's uh, add maybe here under console write line to insert a new line okay and also a console read line so that our console will stay open also after the output is displayed and if we run this right now, we should see the unsorted array of numbers and this seems to be fine. And if you run it once again, it should be another array with different elements. Yes, it, it is. So this part of the program works fine. So now what we have to do is to implement the insertion sort and we would use 
an insertion sort method for this and we will then give to insertion sort our array of numbers and of course this method is not implemented so far so let's implement it so it's a private static void and it was it would take an array of numbers and now we have to implement the logic of insertion sort here now we said that we also need two loops the for loop is a very regular for loop so int i equals zero i is less than numbers dot length minus one and i plus plus so that we increase the counter for this outer loop now we said when we describe the algorithm that the inner loop is a little bit a little bit different than what we know from bubble sort for instance because in this case if we, we perform an insertion sort our loop will always go backwards and will always start with the element i plus one so this would be also a for loop and int j would be equal i plus one because this is where we always start to iterate backwards then we do this until j is greater than zero so so when j is zero it means that we don't have any elements to compare in this backward loop anymore and then in this case since we want to go backwards we won't increase the counter but we will decrease the counter and now if we are in this inner loop we have also to make a comparison between elements so this is why we need an if statement of course and if the number at position j minus one is greater than the number at position j then we would have to perform this type of swap and since this is a swap we also need a temporary variable so int temp equals numbers so the number at position j minus one and the number at position j minus one would be now equal to number at position j and the number at position j would be equal to temp so that's basically it it's, it's very similar to bubble sort for instance but the main difference is the way this inner loop is designed because we start always with the second element in the first iteration so we always start with the element i plus one and then we go backwards and this is why we decrease the counter of the inner loop and we do not increase it because we want to get backwards and by the time all of these loops finish we should have a sorted array of numbers so let's uh, console write line here first a brief explanation okay so the sorted array of numbers is and let's leave also a little bit of space here and of course if we want to print the new sorted uh, array of numbers we would need also a for each loop and for each var number numbers and what we have to do is console.write and we will write the number of course plus some space so that it would be easier to read for us so that should do it right now let's check it out so let's run this program okay we see that the unsorted array of numbers is this one and the sorted array of number is this one so 5 10 23 24 29 34 51 65 93 and 98 so it is fully sorted let's run this program once again to check it with a new array of numbers and once again it is sorted and it's really really fast when we compare it for instance to bubble sort but on this we plan to make a new video on developer ramp up when we will have uh, several sorting algorithms covered and we will want to perform some benchmarking on them to check out exactly which algorithm is faster now before ending this video i want to uh, underline once again this is a simple sorting algorithm 
and this means that insertion sort is part of the same algorithm category like bubble sort and se selection sort. However, uh, even if it is a simple sorting algorithm, its performance is usually better than the performance of bubble sort. Still, if we have to perform sorting on large data sets, insertion sort is not a viable option. It is important, however, to be familiar with this sorting algorithm, especially if you are starting your journey towards being a software developer, because it really helps you to understand exactly how things work, how algorithms are supposed to work, and how the performance of different algorithms is influenced by different factors. So this is why learning this simple sorting algorithm is very very important and especially this insertion sort since here we have a very particular inner loop where we go backwards so we have to be aware of these things. Thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoyed it and if you overall enjoyed the content on developer ramp up hit the subscribe button it would be very helpful for me and if you have any comments to make, questions or you want to give some feedback or have some topics that you want to see discussed on Developer Ramp Up, just hit me up with a, with a comment. And if you might have friends that would find this type of content uh, helpful for them in their path toward becoming a software developer, feel free to share this content on your social media. Thank you once again for watching this video and until the next time I wish you the very best.